Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can use 3D printed extensions to make a 2x3x5 out of a 5x5. The first thing you should do is mark out the areas you're going to glue together to make it. The way you mark uh, the pieces for something like this is kind of similar to a 3x3x5, except some of the pieces you don't need to glue together because they're going to get cut off for the two layers. And also to make it easier to understand what you're doing, it could be helpful to take off the stickers for the pieces you're going to be cutting, um, just to keep track of everything. So this is what it looks like now that the stickers are marked, and you can see that it does look similar to a 3x3x5. So next, you could get some super glue and start gluing the pieces together. The best thing I found to do with this is turn the layer you're going to be gluing by 45 degrees, and then you can make sure that it's uh, flat before you start to glue just to make sure all the pieces are aligned properly. And then you could just put some super glue in between the pieces that need to be glued. So after the glue dried, it did kind of turn weird, but all the layers are still turning where they should and not turning where they're not supposed to. So that's a good thing. So you could take apart the cube to start gluing the pieces properly. So I'm going to be using acetone to do this because acetone melts plastic. So in theory, it should be um, a little bit stronger than super glue because it's kind of welding it. But I just put it in the areas where the pieces come together at the mechanism. Because when you just glue the outside of the pieces, it actually becomes really weak and it's not going to hold together permanently. So you should do this just to make sure it's going to stay secure. Next, I got the pieces that don't have stickers on them because they need to be cut. So I just cut off the cubic areas of the pieces. So I would just be left with the mechanism part. It does look kind of bad now, so you should sand it down later. And I also had to do these for the inner edge pieces. These were a little bit harder, but they're pretty much the same as the other ones. So now that it's assembled, you can see that the alignment mechanism is much smaller than the rest of the pieces, so you can use extensions to cover over it. I sanded down the faces that would need to be cut, so basically the parts that have two in the layer count, and I also started to slightly pillow them. The reason why I'm sanding instead of cutting is because the amount I'm sanding is so little that it's not actually worth it to cut, and also I don't want to risk cutting too much, which would be really annoying to fix. Now that I'm done sanding, you can see the holes in the pieces that I would need to fill. So I just mixed up some epoxy sculpt and put it into each piece. Next, I removed the stickers from the top and bottom faces, because these are the sides that I would need to extend with the 3D printed extensions, and you can't glue them onto the stickers. So these are some of the extensions that you need to glue. These will be available for download in the description. Unfortunately, I did kind of mess up when I was designing them, so I should have fixed them by the time they're uploaded. But there's a chance that they might not be fixed completely, so you might have to modify them a little. I sanded down the faces a little just to prepare them for the gluing. And then after that, I disassembled it so I could start gluing on the extensions. So this piece is going to need an extension, and the one I'm gluing on is just a rectangle. So I just put acetone on it to use it as glue, and then I just put it on, and then let it dry for a little. Also for the pieces that don't have stickers on them, you're going to need to glue two types of extensions on. For these big pieces, there's this uh, bigger corner extension that you want to glue on, and then there's also just a big rectangular extension that you need to glue onto the face to extend out the side. Also you should keep in mind that there's two types of edge pieces with different extensions. There's this one which has three pieces connected and there's this one which just has two. Um, you have to glue the same extension to the bottom part that will extend over the alignment mechanism. But on the one with less pieces, you have to glue on this bigger extension to the left of it also. But then for this one, you just have the one extension on the bottom. Also, for one of the big corner pieces, you need to glue on some of the alignment mechanism edge pieces, which is going to make sure the 
middle layer that's hidden doesn't turn while turning other layers. So you basically just have to glue one of the edges to the rest of the piece like this. So this is what it looks like now that all the extensions are glued on. It does, didn't turn really well because I kind of messed up when designing the extensions so it kind of locks up. Other than that though it still mostly turns where it should so I could just fix it later. So now I should have taken off the red and orange stickers but I just took it apart because I forgot about it. But now you just have to fill the gaps in between the pieces that were glued together to make it look like one solid piece instead of a bunch of pieces. So now I'm taking off the stickers that I was supposed to earlier and then I'm just using epoxy sculpt to fill the pieces. I made sure to fill all the areas, not just like the gaps in between the pieces but also the small holes on the side of the uh, inner center pieces. Because you don't have to do this but then mid turn you'll be able to see them and it doesn't look that great. So this is one of the pieces that I finished filling and you could just see that all the small holes and gaps are gone and it just looks like one piece. After the epoxy dried, I just used uh, some sandpaper to sand it flat where the rest of the surface is. For the edge pieces where the mechanism got in the way, I had to use the edge of a table with sandpaper on it to make sure I could sand it correctly. I also found it helpful to use a file to sand down certain areas because the file isn't as rough as the rough sandpaper, so I don't need to worry about a uh, really rough finish. So after I finished sanding everything, I reassembled it and it was turning better than it was before now. So I tightened the layer so it wouldn't turn as easily and then I started sanding it on the belt sander again. The nice thing about using the 3D printed extensions is as long as I don't sand past where the extensions meet the plastic, then I'm not going to sand too deep and in theory the corner pieces should be perfectly cubic then. I find that the best way to make pillowed faces look good is using a lot of hand sanding. The belt sander is really just good to get the rough shape and then I like to use sanding sponges to sand down to make it smoother and more even. After the shape looked good and I was happy with it, I disassembled the cube so that I could round over the edges individually. This step's really important because it makes the cube look a lot better when it's done. Also, if you have slight imperfections in the surface where surfaces aren't completely even, this will kind of hide that because it's rounded so you can't see it as easily. Once all the pieces are rounded over, you could just reassemble it and this should be the last reassemble you need to do before finishing the puzzle. I also cut a little cap from the original center cap that I would be able to fit in the center piece. This is just a way to cover up the screw. You could also just fill it with epoxy sculpt and make sure you don't get any on the screw. But after that, you really just need to paint it and sticker it. So this is what it looks like now that it's finished. I really like the way this turned out because I think it actually looks pretty good. Using the 3D printed extensions definitely made it a lot easier and I'd recommend that you make this especially if you have a 3D printer. Like I said earlier, I made this out of a Shangshao Legend, so you should probably make it out of a Shangshao Legend if you're going to use the extensions, but you could probably use something else too as long as it's the same dimensions. I would say that this is easier to make than something like a 3x5x5 because you don't need to pillow it as much, which is one of the reasons why I think it looks better, because the faces are more flat and the oozing looks more simple. So if you're looking for a cuboid to make that's not going to be too hard but still fun to solve, this is probably a good one to make. I did actually mix it up and it was pretty hard to solve. I expected it to solve similarly to other cuboids but it was actually kind of weird with the way you have to solve it. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it's helpful if you do decide to make one. And if you liked it please leave a like and I'll see you in my next video.